Morning folks, my name is Phil Gallagher. I run the Braven University, a site for legacy death and taxes, and welcome back to Daily DNT. Uh, this week's content is supported by my friend Dr. Bill. I made a trip down to Charlotte to see him on uh, Saturday, and he donated not money, but some cards to the cause. I don't know if this is going to like come out. I'm going to try, but... Uh, uh, yeah, sweet German flicker wisps. Uh, as well as some um, German snowlands, an ancient tomb, and a giver of runes. Uh, so he's supported Daily DNT for about three weeks by donating that. So thanks, Dr. Bill. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, I figured over the next couple of weeks of Daily DNT, I would show off uh, some other sorts of lists because people have been asking for that. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is try out like the white, red, or technically like three color taxes build. Um, this is one that I found online from what I assume was a French event. So, uh, I'll probably butcher this name, uh, apologies in advance, uh, but Maximi uh, Versipue uh, ran this 74 of this 75 uh, to two finishes. Uh, I swapped out one card. Uh, this was a Stone Cloaker, but I'm just going to play a Rest in Peace because I don't really think Stone Cloaker is a particularly playable card. Alright, uh, so let's look at the strengths and weaknesses of this build before we just hop into a league. Uh, number one, it's a four Cavernous Souls human heavy build. Um, so like if you just kind of take a quick look at like creature types. Oh, I didn't want to pull that Flicker Wisp. I want to pull these. If you just kind of take a quick look, in the main deck you have 16 humans that are going to be uncounterable most of the times. Uh, and flicker wisps that will often like put a cavern on elemental and then flicker it back to human. So you end up with a huge density of uncounterable spells and an I win button for some matchups in Magus of the Moon and the ability to grind through decks like Miracles with PNK plus Caracas. Uh, what's the downside of doing this? So you are playing four white sources that don't produce t true white. So if you're always putting these cavern souls on humans, your stone gorgeous flicker with swords, plowshares, and sideboard cards become much harder to cast. Um, so that's probably why you'll notice uh, fewer white white sideboard cards um, that aren't human based. Uh, so the mana is a little sketchy. Uh, I'm just going to be upfront about that. Uh, trying to go and splash something like Orzhov Pontiff only a couple off uh, like a couple of cavernous souls is a little bit questionable. Um, but I figured I should just like show off some of the problems with a deck like this rather than say like, hey, you shouldn't be playing multicolored taxes right now because Ren and Six and Wasteland are everywhere. So the strengths of the deck is most of your stuff's gonna be uncounterable and you get a handful of bullets that can go and take over certain matches. The weaknesses are you make your mana base uh, noticeably worse and and you make some of your spells harder to cast. Now, some people will say, hey, but actually, you know, you know we don't have the fourth Rashad and Rish Port here, so it's almost like we have more mana sources. Yeah, but Basic Planes is really good at not being destroyed. Uh, as far as the sideboard stuff goes, it's it's traditional stock DNT stuff, but the numbers are a little weird, and there's a little bit of an emphasis towards having greater tutorability than more range. Uh, let's hop into a Legacy League with this and see how it does. Uh, so for me, it's, uh, it's Sunday, August 4th. Uh, wasn't really up and active early enough to be in the Legacy Challenge today. So I just kind of woke up late, had a lazy morning, played some Hollow Knight. Um, now the girlfriend's messing around with Zelda on the on the Switch, you know, putting some more hours into the, the grind through Breath of the Wild. So it's recording time for me. Uh, otherwise, life's good for me. I've been uh, playing a little bit of modern D&T. Went to my first paper event with it and went 2-1 and one with wins against Wir Prison, or Narset Prison, whatever exactly it is. Uh, and blue-eyed control, and a loss to the blue-red phoenix deck. One thing I like about the the modern DMT deck is like you get to play with Restoration Angel and Flicker Wisp simultaneously. 
Uh, and that can be really dumb. All right, no more stalling for time. Matches begin. Maybe. Playing against Power Hawk. Uh, this is a solid hand. Uh, note we see some awkwardness here in the mana base because we get a choice of whether or not we want to put this on like core or human. Uh, I'll probably be putting it on human to try to curve Thalia into Magus, uh, but I might just die by then. I might need to wasteland on turn one and hope they don't have another land. If a creature goes into the bin, I'm 100% wastelanding. I can't cast this source of plowshares off my Cavern of Souls. So we have like two different problems with the Cavern of Souls in hand already on the very first hand with a multicolored deck list. A Grave Titan. Oh man, are we just getting like turn one Grave Titan? Sure seems like it. Uh, note that if this was a basic planes and I just got to Swords the Plowshares the Grave Titan here, I would have time to like just deploy Thalia and probably win this game. Uh, but because it's not basic planes, I will be conceding right here because I'm gonna hit I'm gonna get hit for five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then even if I answer Grave Titan, there's still eight powers worth of zombie on board. Uh, so I will be conceding. All right, uh, let's see what I have for Reanimator. Path, Priest, Canonist at Medium, Cleric, Rest in Peace, will consider Relic Order and Council's Judgment, Surgical Spine, Prelate Spine. Uh, in these matchups, I tend to cut or trim the equipment package pretty heavily. Uh, the red stuff that I have here is probably not going to be worth it. So sort of like for the ease of like making my mana base work, I might just do that. And just play all of these. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I would like to play first. Uh, this one's gonna be a mulligan. I, I can't do anything early on. Uh, to take advantage of the fact that I'm on the play. Uh, this has turned to graveyard hate and a couple like ways to interact with my opponent. Uh, this will be a keep and I think I'll be pitching the recruiter of the guard because I have plenty to do with my mana in the short term. Let's see if they don't, nope, they don't have a chancellor. So, mo moto tip, don't F6 through your opponent's turns if they're playing Reanimator. Like, don't let them know you don't have Surgical. F2 uh, passes priority unless something is on the stack, and that's a much better way to, like, quickly power through all the stops in your opponent's turn. <sighs> opponent's thinking hard, which may mean they're considering just going to their end step. All right, unmask, target me. Goodbye, remorseful cleric. No, goodbye, source of flashers. Uh, I'm probably in trouble then because that means I can just produce a creature right now. It's just gonna be like into and reanimate. Herp it, herp it, herp. Oh, well, this is no good. So I just lose my land here. Uh, I think that was very incorrect. Like, you just want to try to keep me off swords to plowshares. Uh, I'm going to be mostly dead before that vial matters. So 
So I have a few turns to draw through this. Yeah, I guess let's be a good magic player and let's attack before doing anything else. So the dream here is to get my opponent to the point where they have to hold their creature back. I don't know if that's happening this turn, but it's probably happening within the next turn cycle or two, yeah. So the game is starting to favor me. We're not quite there yet, but this is going to do wonders. Um, I am not going to wasteland them. Ripping one land to throw this Jailer in play uh, will be very powerful. Otherwise, I'll get it with the Aether Vial in a turn or two. Nice. Uh, that's a great land specifically to draw. Uh, notably, this is ETV or dies, not leaves play. Uh, we'll be shipping the same 60 back when we're on the draw. No changes. As always, the games on the draw against Reanimator are noticeably harder. Because, uh, like, most of my impactful stuff is at the two-drop slot. So they can either, like, punch a hole in what you keep by turn two, or dump a creature in play by turn two. And I have very little, like turn one or zero interaction versus them. You know, things had to go wrong for them for like a four mana card to be relevant to the game. Uh, I mean, we have Graveyard Hate and an Ether Vial, so this is going to be a keep. No Chancellor is good, so if my opponent goes all in on turn one, I'll maybe get him. Oh, there's Hope. It's a Grizzlebrand. Reanimate it. Oh, yeah. So my opponent is on Magus of the Moon tech, which is actually disastrous for me, given my hand. Let's take a quick snip here. Okay. Alright, we buy a good amount of time here. So their hand is Exhum Magus Delta. Do I want to wasteland them? I don't think I need to wasteland them this turn. I'll probably do it next turn. So I think I'm going to go wasteland vile and then pass the turn. Since they're only two drop in hand is exhum, um, in order for anything to go wrong, they really would need to draw Faithless Loot in that turn. Am I just porting now? No. 
I think I'm going to go ahead and wasteland them. Play out my Caracas and pass. And then for the next couple of turns, I can hold up Swords to Plowshares. That way I don't get got by Magus of the Moon. Uh, this is this is acceptable. So I'll end step port down this delta if they don't play another land. So this either prompts them to fetch or opens it up to just being wastelanded. We'll be taking our sweet time with this game. Just little little love taps here and there. So the reason to do this line rather than just port the swamp is so that if they play a fetch land, at end step, I can go ahead and port that down and then potentially wasteland the land that follows. Nice. Uh, we, ha we have soft control over this game. I have multiple things about the current situation that still make me nervous. Like, I'm, I'm still in bad shape to Magus of the Moon, assuming, like, a discard spell at some point takes his sorts of plowshares. My clock isn't, like, amazing. It's fine. Uh, let's just say always no to this. I think I'm going to go ahead and double port rather than hold up Path or Swords. I'm going to operate under the assumption that I might be able to just like out aggro a Magus of the Moon even if it shuts off all my cards. Deal. Deal, 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 deal. Um... So I guess the question is, like, what do I put the Sanctum Prelate on? I guess in order to get anything in the graveyard, they would need to cast a one-drop. Either in Tomb or Faithless Looting. Let's see if they respond. Since they didn't respond, I'm going to go ahead and Sanctum Prelate on one. Uh, if they had responded in Cast and Tomb, I would have put it on 2 instead. Alright, uh, good stuff. Despite the awkwardness of the Cavernous Souls, we won the match. I will see you tomorrow.